We just saw that the, the treasury yield curve for the U.S. Uh, as of uh, June 2020, this is the current one, it's a blue one, it's upward sloping, meaning that uh, long-term interest rates uh, or, or the interest rate or the yield on long-term bonds is larger or higher than the annualized yield for the short term. So this is a normal yield curve. And there's a theory called the pure expectations theory that tries to explain um, based on the following assumptions that the, there is no maturity risk premium, meaning that the yield curve doesn't depend on, on the expectations about the future, but uh, it's just that uh, the, the investor expectations are the ones that move the future rates. Uh, in other words, it's not the maturity risk premium that moves uh, the, that makes the, the upward sloping uh, curve. So um, we can use, based on this, and the importance of this uh, theory is that if you can forecast what the future rates will be or what the interest rates will be in the future, then you can anticipate to that uh, and uh, act today upon something that is expected maybe next year or in, or in two years. If uh, the wisdom of the crowds is correct, then we should expect that uh, we can predict what the future markets uh, will do, you know, what markets will do in the future. So this is the very enticing model. In theory, we could use uh, existing data that we observe in the market to forecast uh, future interest rates and anticipate in borrowing or lending, depending on what we expect. Uh, you will see that just the spoiler alert that the peer expectations uh, doesn't uh, hold. But it's a good uh, math exercise that if you believe that they are right, then you can use the what you observe to forecast future uh, forward rates. So let me give you one example. Suppose that we're working here in Excel and this is what we observe. No? So we observe that uh, the yield curve, these are the maturity and these are the, the annualized uh, yields. So we can see that this is, if we were to plot this into a yield curve, this will be upward sloping because short-term yields are lower than long-term yields. So the question is, what I, I observed now the two-year, the, the rate on the one-year, and I also observed the rate on the two-year. My question is, what would be the rate one year from today or suppose that you have the choice. Uh, should I invest in a two-year bond or do two one-year bonds? So one year, and then when it matures, I renew for another year. Uh, and uh, if the peer expectations hypothesis is correct, then we should expect that uh, the one-year bond a year from today, or in other words, the forward one-year rate will be uh, the 2.4. How do you find it? Well, but you say, you, you can, uh, let me show you a graph first. So graphically, it's going to look like this. So we know, we observe this one, the one-year rate is going to be 2%. The, the annualized two-year bond is yielding 2.2% per year, so 2% for one year and 2% for another year. So what we are looking for is what the rate will be at the end of this year for one year. In other words, the one-year forward rate for the following year. And we use the data that we observed and try to guess or estimate what the, no, it's not a guess, it's an estimate what the actual rate will be in a year. So we know, we can put this in equation saying the yield on the two year, the 2.2, .2, so one plus the yield on the two year squared because we are earning interest over one, two years should equal the yield on the one-year bond that we see today, the yield on this one, the 2%, times the yield that we don't know which one is it. So this is the x. Now we're trying to find 1 plus x. So we can work around and then square this and we get this number divided by this number is equal to this. And then we subtract 1 and this is the answer that we find. So in a year, the Two point, the, the one year forward rate will be 2.4%. So if we do a 2% here, then we, we expect to make 2.4% on this 
the other year to compensate and make the same return as the 2.2. We can also use, uh, instead of the geometric average that I used here, we can use the arithmetic average, but the answer is very close because these are very low numbers. So you see that this is a rounding, uh, I mean, it's a very, very close. We can also use that in Excel, and in Excel it's going to look like this. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. So I'm using the formulas but uh, we're looking for the rate we one year for, from today. And we arrive at the solution. This is exactly the same as uh, we, we did in the, in the slides. So let's try another example. So now we're going to go long term. So suppose we want to have a two year security and I would like to know what would be the yield if for the two year security two years from now. So this is what we observe. So we observe today that the two year uh, yield is 2.2, they remember that table, no? And then the uh, four year is yielding 2.5% per year. So we know that the yield on the four year should be equal to the yield on the two year and this one that we don't know, the one in red here. This is the term that we would like to know. So what would be the two year security in two years? So should I do, if I am right with the pure expectations, should I do a four-year at 2.5% or should I do a 2.2% and what my return should be at this point in order to for these two options to become equivalent? So we can go to Excel and then apply the formula. So if I have to put it in, in words, it would be like this. A one plus the yield on the four year, so the two and a half percent uh, to the fourth, should equal one plus the yield on the two year squared, because we're earning one, two years of interest at 2.2%, 2, 2 .2 times the one plus the two year uh, forward rate squared also that we don't see. So we saw as we did in the previous one, I show you the Excel, but it's pretty much the same. Um, the same uh, formula and in the end we arrive at the two um, we have to for not forget to take the square root of all the term here because uh, this is one plus x squared and so we have to take the square root and then finally we get the point two point eight percent so that would be the expected rate uh, for the f uh, two year forward at this point we have to we expect to make 2.8% over one year and 2.8% over the second year as well. So this is the pure expectations hypothesis.